So this is the first run with the, uh, well, second run with the glass bed. So uh, I'm already seeing a heck of a difference. Uh, I was able to get the bed level, and uh, it's still not perfectly level. There's a warp to the uh, right rear corner. It, uh, it's always been there. It's actually uh, worse than I thought. It, uh, even with the glass bed, I can't compensate for it. Um, so actually, without the clip in that corner holding the bed on, actually helps it a little bit. So I was able to get it pretty damn level. And uh, hit the print head to bugger off to the back there for a bit. See if I can get a shot of it. It's hard when uh, we've got a mirror. Uh, that's the first layer. So I always print the same. I always squish the first layer right into the bed. I, I never have sticking problems. You'll notice that uh, there is no hairspray on here. Um, I've always done the same thing. I always set the, the Z axis, the home position, and then program in an offset bit by bit until I get this style of a squish. And uh, admittedly the first layer will squish out the sides a little bit, kind of like a brim, but for most prints it simply doesn't matter. You take a little bit of sandpaper and take it off. So. That's what it looks like. Um, might help someone to get an idea. That is what I always consider a perfect squish for uh, those are two side by side layers or uh, paths. And in a minute, when this thing's done, the, the first layer, uh, the fan will turn on. Also, you'll notice I turn the first layer speed way down. It takes longer to print the first layer of most prints than the subsequent 20 layers. Uh, I always found that this solves my sticking problem. The print bed right now is at 98.6 degrees. It took a while to get there with the new glass, but uh, well worth it. I do really slow first layer and uh, um, really, uh, well, good, good high enough temp right there, just hit 99.2. Slow speed, real close, high temperature, and this is what I get. And uh, well, I'll see if I can pause this and then uh, cut back in when we get a bit more of a model. This is an Arduino uh, bumper for the board, so we'll let this uh, go because the first layer is going to take quite a little while. So here's the print continuing. Uh, looking good so far. A uh, couple little globs. Again, I got to tune the retraction settings just a little, I think. And uh, I noticed I have one corner at the back there that did try and lift a little bit. Uh, we'll see whether that wrecks the print or whether that sticks back down or how that works out. But um, yeah, so far so good. Glass bed working like a treat, uh, no problems. So well, uh, I'm surprised the fan hasn't come on. Uh, must have decided it didn't need it, so I'm just gonna override it. Tell it to come on, and hopefully, with any luck, unless my fan broke. There we go. Catches up in the G code, and oh, what or how? That's uh, one of the tricky things with Slicer. It uh, sometimes decides it doesn't need fan when uh, we know full well it, it will help. So you override it, and then uh, if the G code decides it needs it, and then turns it on or off, it will override your manual and shut it back off again. So it's kind of either gonna let it run uh, on its own, or babysit it and fire it back on and off, depending. But usually on its own, it does a pretty darn good job. So uh, let's see if can catch a glimpse of that back corner. Yeah, it did lift just a tiny bit, and it's causing a little bit of globbing in the corner, but, you know, uh, in all likelihood, this print's actually going to be fine. So, I'm thinking the uh, the hairspray might be a good idea, and uh, maybe give that a try yet, but uh, we'll see how this does for now. Well, finished up the, uh, the Uno bumper. Uh, case of sorts and uh, turned out that corner didn't mess things up too bad after all but uh, all the rest adhered to the board just fine. I'm not sure how this is going to work on video with a mirror and a cell phone camera but yeah whatever. Um, I heard the little pop so I'm pretty sure it should be yeah, let go and that 
is what we get. A uh, little bit of slop on there. I already backed up, or actually increased the retraction settings. I haven't been using them lately. You can see where that corner messed things up is where it started to drool a little bit and a couple little fuzzies, but uh, all in all, pretty happy with this. Uh, first layer is even and uh, well, really nice and smooth now. No more divots where my thumb screws were for the solid oodle bed. Um, I never did poke through the Kapton for my thumb screws. I used these little really lousy 3D printed uh, thumb screws that actually only let uh, a thumb screw print a third of the way and then stuck them on there with super glue. So I, I've never poked through the Kapton, but it does always leave divots and uh, well, now with the mirror, those are a thing of the past. And uh, off comes the loop that uh, clears out the extruder head. So uh, yeah, all in all, pretty happy with that. Uh, can't complain, uh, except that I just threw it in the muck in the bottom of the printer and got a whole bunch of pieces of filament stuck to it out of the bottom. But uh, yeah, that's the finished product. I know the lighting is horrible in here, but uh, there's all the muck that I got stuck on it, but uh, all in all, pretty decent, pretty happy with that. So, and that's at 0.3 millimeter, and uh, can't hardly see layer heights. I can't focus anyway. So, I'll leave it at that. That's uh, the current status of my solid oodle with the z-axis nut, uh, glass bed now, mirrors from the dollar store, and Ian's fan duct mod. I'll maybe do a quick touch on the fan duct mod as a, a separate video. I did learn a couple of things. I did wreck one of them before I got that working, the uh, the duct itself. I'll save that for another video. Anyway, thanks for watching.